More on this, let's bring in some veteran political strategist, former DNC senior advisor Steve McMahon, and former Rubio senior advisor Alex Conan. Gentlemen, good morning to you both. Good morning, Carl. Guys, I like Ben Smith's line in Politico. Here it is. We've always said wild card investigatory disclosures pose the biggest threat to a solid Clinton win. Well, we got one. Steve, is it, can we make any guesses as to what it, this impact will be? Well, we can, we can all sit here and guess, which is, I guess, what we're going to do today. If you look at the numbers that I've seen over the weekend, it seems like the race hasn't moved very much. I actually think that the email controversy and the trust issues that Hillary Clinton has struggled with have been pretty well reflected in the value of the stock. And I think voters have made their judgments largely um, based on those two things in the background. And I don't think this changes it. There's no question that it would be better for the Clinton campaign if they weren't talking about this right now. But I don't think that, that um, it's going to fundamentally alter the outcome of the race. Uh, that, that is, Alex, unless there's something explosive that we're going to find out uh, in the next eight days, right? That's, a good, that's absolutely right. A week is a really, really long time in presidential politics. And this, uh, the, the people just found out about this news on Friday night. I wouldn't expect it to show up in any polling right away. As Steve knows, sometimes, sometimes it can take several days for major events like this to be reflected in the polling. It is the worst possible way for the Clinton campaign to finish this election. They don't want to be talking about her own scandals, her own trouble with ethics, her own email problems. They want to be talking about Donald Trump. And this revelation on Friday night guarantees that the rest of the election is going to be about whether or not you can trust Hillary Clinton. That's bad for her. It's bad for Democrats running down ticket. It's great for the Republican Party. And on that note, the political pressure on James Comey continues to rise. This morning, Eric Holder, the former attorney general, in an sort of unusual, stunning, and scathing op-ed in the Washington Post says that I fear he has unintentionally and negatively affected public trust in both the Justice Department and the FBI. Steve, what does Comey do next? When do we expect to hear from him and how does he handle all of this criticism? Well, that's a really good question and I don't think anybody is questioning his role as the prosecutor here because if somebody brings something like this to your attention, as a prosecutor, you're obligated to look into it. I think what they're objecting to is, is the fact that he's doing this so publicly. There's a long-standing tradition in both Democratic and Republican administrations, which, by the way, James Comey violated initially in July when he did his news conference. But that tradition says that you don't comment on pending investigations, um, and you don't speculate, and you certainly don't have news conferences um, just, just before elections. In fact, there's a, generally a rule that's understood by prosecutors that you don't bring any action forward within 60 days of an election because it might impact the outcome. So, and by the way, there's some precedent even here in Washington, D.C. A prosecutor did this to Vince Gray, the mayor, basically um, suggested that he was corrupt right before a primary, and then Vince Gray lost that primary, a new, new mayor was elected here, and the charges were later dropped, or the investigation was later dropped. So, you know, there's, there's a reason that the Justice Department has these rules that apply to both Democrats and Republicans. James Comey is a, is a, is a fine prosecutor and a fine man, and, and as uh, Eric Holder pointed out, nobody thinks that he would have intentionally besmirched the reputation of the FBI or justice. But that seems to have been what happened here because partisans on both sides are now using the FBI and the Justice Department as a political cudgel, which is not what that should be for any party. Alex, you think Harry Reid is serious about this violation of the Hatch Act? Look, I just don't understand why Democrats would want to go to war with the FBI the week before the election. The FBI is not going to be on the ballot next Tuesday. It's going to be Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. So I, in my opinion, and I'm not one that normally gives advice to Democrats, but I don't think that they should be attacking the FBI, especially when all the FBI did was keep its promise to Congress. I mean, in essence, the Democrats are arguing that the FBI should have withheld information from Congress that was pertinent to an ongoing uh, investigation that's in the national interest. I mean, I think that they should err on the side of having all the information out there. Hillary Clinton should welcome these developments rather than going to war with the FBI as they have over the last 48 but, but hours. Alex, Alex, I would agree with you that Comey should keep the, F the uh, Congress in turn, I'm sorry, alert the Congress about significant developments in a case. But the fact that the FBI came and said there's another device without anything more is not a significant development. It could be entirely irrelevant. It could be entirely contemporary. I'm sorry. It could be entirely outside the, the scope of this investigation. And what Comey did was he basically allowed his investigation to become a cudgel in a political campaign, which is against the, the Justice Department rules for both Democrats and Republicans. That doesn't make him a bad man. It just makes him somebody who who made a bad judgment and, and now is, is sort of left with the consequences. He's doing exactly what he told Congress he was going to do. I don't think that there's anything wrong with him. Yeah. 
Well, we didn't leave us any time to talk about state strategy, guys. We'll try that <laughs> next time. Okay. Thanks we'll as always, back. Steve, Alex. Thanks so much.